a votary of truth. Dr. S. Shatter Dr. S. Shatter was born on 11th December 1935 at Hampa Sagar, Bellari district. He graduated from Mysore University with a MA degree in history, scoring a first in first with five gold medals in 1960. He has earned two PhDs, one from Karnataka University, Darwad and one from Cambridge University, England. After an illustrious teaching career in various national and international universities, he occupied the chairmanship of Indian Council of Historical Research. As a research scholar of repute, he has published several papers and books, both in Canada and English. He has won several prestigious awards like Karnataka Rajyotsava Award, Karnataka Lalitakala Academy Award, Central Lalitakala Academy Award and National Award for an Eminent Historian given by Indian History Congress in 1993. Sir, we would like to know uh, your experience as a student and what impact uh, Dr. Srikesh has had on you. And uh, later, how he inspired you to take up research work and uh, go into archaeology and all those things? Um, one of the uh, memorable things in my life uh, is to see I was a student of uh, Dr. Srikant Shastri and I was uh, having the privilege of listening to his lectures as in the classrooms. This was uh, between 1955 and 1959. 1955 to 58, I was a honor student, and in uh, 1959, I uh, I was uh, doing my MA, and soon after, so few days after, I joined the Maharaja's College also as a lecturer. So it was my fortune to, to be a student as well as for at least one year a junior colleague of. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Shikant Shastri, which, I, um, which is a very precious kind of a, a memory I could uh, recall. Uh, <clears throat> she was a very serious scholar. What impressed me most was, we had two kinds of teachers at that time, let me tell you, in Maharaja scholars itself. Uh, there was one uh, group, see, which uh, uh, specialized in research and teaching both. There was another one which did not pay much attention to research, but they were very good teachers. Mm -hmm. See, those who did not research, they used to research for the classroom and come to the class and give us the best of their, to the best of their ability. Uh, Dr. Srikant Shastri was primarily a researcher. Of course, his in-depth scholarship was too much for the classroom, but he used to, to convince the students and we used to get uh, awe-inspired almost, you see, in every class because uh, he used to uh, bring uh, what he knew best in the field to the classroom also, which is a very rare kind of a thing. I can't recall the kind of uh, scholarship that he had uh, in others. Uh, ours was a very wonderful, uh, um, it is, it, I could say that it is the golden period of Maharaja scholars. There was DLM, Tenam Sri, Patil Puttapa, well, I mean, sorry, Koyampu, and then uh, Nikam was there in philosophy, um, and several of these, uh, Yemi Krishna Rao, um, Sheshadri, Nilakant uh, Shastri just retired when we uh, entered into the college. So, in almost every department, there used to be a very distinguished teacher. 
but not of all of them we see were on par with uh, Dr. Shikant Shastri in, in terms of research and other kind of thing. We were honest students who had the privilege of listening to him once or twice in a week and uh, he continued to teach, his, teach us see, uh, till the end, that is till 59. Um, he was not one of those who would sit and idle you see, in the area, uh, staff room. He would finish his work, get back either to the library or home, that I remember very well. And always who used to walk from his home to, to, to the to the classroom state, even without going to the staff room, that kind of thing. Because I know when I was there for one year as a, in the staff, uh, there used to be other senior teachers to say occupying some corners, but he would not. He would not he would not waste his time at all. That is one aspect of it. <coughs> Somehow or the other, see he I think every student should have this kind of a feeling. And I have the similar kind of feeling that he was very fond of me. Or rather, you see, inspired me so much that I uh, I found in him a model for myself. Um, in fact, you see, those days, bright students who used to, to have ranks, first class, first and that kind of a thing, they always used to go for um, IAS examination and such other competitive examinations. But um, it is uh, Dr. Shrikant Shastri and the like of those, very few of those, who probably inspired me to, to, to be a teacher in my life rather than uh, anything else. I never uh, uh, aspired to be an administrator or uh, anything else except teacher. <coughs> Unfortunately for me, um, uh, teaching post came, fell on my lap to see without any effort because Soon after my viva, I was offered to, to be uh, to the position of a uh, of a lecturer in Maharaja's College, and I was there for one year, and then I returned to, to Maharaja's College. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the story of the. So, what uh, made me think about uh, about um, uh, teachership as an important uh, thing in life? Those days, as the teacher used to get only hundred rupees salary. In fact, when I joined Maharaja's college, I got 110 rupees as a salary, <laughs> which was a, quite an astronomical figure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, opportunities for research were very rare. There were no fellowships whatsoever. Uh, Dr. Shikant Shastri and others, you see, uh, of his uh, time, they never depended upon fellowships and recognitions. They did it on their, on their own. Uh, love for the subject was very rare. Uh, he was already legendary. We as students used to, to hear about him <coughs> that he knew so many languages, not only the Indian languages but uh, other languages also. And uh, But I know that he was a very uh, a deep scholar in Kannada as well as in Sanskrit and he knew Prakrit properly. Uh, but he, he was interested in seeing the other Asian ancient languages. But I have, uh, I have no knowledge of uh, what he did with them. but he was very curious about everything and uh, since he uh, spent the whole day uh, with the books and with the uh, old manuscripts and inscriptions uh, he would uh, easily learn and digest things uh, for us to see uh, his lectures used to be very very important and uh, when he was uh, lecturing to us he was not only quoting um, citing the texts which are written by other scholars but citing the original sources. This is how for the first time I heard of Epigraphy Karnataka, uh, Mysore Archaeological Reports, South Indian Inscriptions and uh, ancient texts. Uh, these were uh, heard by us for the first time although we had come up to, to honors class. Earlier teachers to see on our BA courses and intermediate courses they never cited these things. But for the first time we heard about it and I was one of those who became very curious to know what these books contain. And uh, I remember one incident to see that, uh, that uh, I, call, I went to him, of course I used to go to, to his home almost uh, every fortnight, sometimes every week also. And uh, I had the happy memory of, uh, of uh, sitting with him, uh, with his missus and also some of you, um, two or three of you, I remember very well. I always used to sit in the in the front veranda, the veranda, stone seat, 
and next to him I had to sit because you see he was little hard on hearing naturally I had to sit next to him and talk to him and uh, talking to him was uh, not easy but also talking to him was not easy for me because you see I, I was always uh, diffident to, to raise questions <laughs> but uh, he had uh, he had a wonderful mind and uh, a very open mind and uh, he would um, talk to, to the students to see uh, whom would care because you see the, the moment he would come he would uh, realize that this student is bright and really his uh, interests are deep he would share many of his uh, things uh, many of his secrets of, uh, of research and in life also and, uh, but hardly ever spoke of his achievements uh, we used to come to know about it from others rather than uh, he had a large number of enemies because he was too above everybody so naturally he had enemies also among the scholars. That is not enemies, I could say that it is enemies. Detractors. Envy. Envy. Jealousy. Detractors. Yes. 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 Detractors. Detractors. In a way. And that is how. So. so for the first time I asked him, you see, how, where, where are these epigraphic Karnataka volumes uh, which are edited by Louis Rice and uh, later on by Arnar Simacha and the history of Kannada literature, that kind of a thing. Uh, he gave me some idea and uh, there was one Iyengar see in our library. Uh, his name I don't remember, very very dedicated man. Uh, I used to, to take this um, this information and approach Mr. Iyengar and ask him to show me epigraphic Karnataka, Mysore Atlas reports and some of the ancient texts. And uh, he was so nice uh, gentleman. Those days librarians were not bookkeepers, they were also scholars. And knowledgeable people. Knowledgeable people, they know everything. And, and so he would keep these volumes, you see, on the table in the central fire of the library. And when I would come back from the classroom, he would call me and say, here are the, the books that he wanted to. Uh, otherwise, these books were not allowed to, to be touched by the students. They were the red label. You are not allowed to, to see them. This is how I came to know about the uh, original sources. Um, I never thought that uh, I would become a researcher one day. <laughs> My ambition was to become a teacher. Um, and uh, teaching post was very fascinating to, to me. Because those days, you see, it is not the money that was attracting us. It was the position that it was attracting. And to be... Um, a part of the younger generation was also very interesting and uh, our teachers were a bit um, uh, ideal persons to attract and they had this uh, this uh, magnetic um, element in them which made us to, to, to feel see, that we should also be teachers like that. I remember in the incident to see that uh, um, fortunately I always stood first uh, in all the honors, honors three years course and also in MA and um, I got uh, several gold medals. I'm not telling about these things because I got the gold medals but I don't know about it. No, there is, there is an interesting part in it. When I passed the all honors, um, uh, honors course, I got about uh, four gold medals and um, one gold medal um, more than what uh, S.B. Muddapa got. In the meanwhile, something had happened to his health and um, he was hospitalized. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have the opportunity of uh, listening throughout uh, the MA course to see his lectures. But uh, he was so, I was so attached to him, uh, somehow he attracted me and I used to, to go to his house frequently. But when he was admitted to the hospital, you see that uh, uh, I could not resist but see him almost every weekend. <coughs> and whenever I uh, used to feel that I should see him, I used to walk from my hostel to, to the special ward where he was. And uh, well, that is his story. And we um, uh, used to sit down there also in the hospital, talk to, to each other uh, of things common. But he was always a great scholar to us and uh, an ideal teacher. Uh, I do not think uh, the scholarship of that depth and width um, is found uh, these days. Uh, if we uh, take the assistance of Atharva Veda, 
perhaps we will be able to decipher this. He was one of the persons who see uh, those days in my student days who was interested in Indus script. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could not make head or tail of talking about it because it was just the beginning. Mm -hmm. He was uh, one of the early pioneers who were talking about the, uh, the Indus script, you see, and uh, nobody had uh, discovered it. And he, if he had been given, if he had had uh, this kind of a facility which we enjoy now, so do you think uh, some Hindu motifs have been found there like altar and yajna worship and uh, this, is, this is very very difficult to swastika. see. But, but, but there are many symbols, huh. many images uh, which, are, which resemble Hindu gods and goddesses. But um, there is no doubt that it is indigenous uh, sculpture. But uh, we have to, to wait and see what is the outcome, total outcome. But I think now more or less most of the historians agree that there was no Aryan invasion as such. No, the, that, that is not a serious issue these days. Uh -huh. But there are still people fundamentally who are, uh, who are talking about it. So there what's your impression of out of India theory? These people say that uh, the people from here went to Iran and uh, Avestan language. Uh, that was what your father held. Uh, I mean, he was also uh, uh, the he was also advocating. You see that the that's uh, the the Rigveda, I think uh, the 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 Aryan culture. You see, uh, went out of India and kind of thing. Uh, you see, the this question is a very naughty question. Question, and um, uh, those who floated the idea that the Central Asia was the base, and uh, the uh, Aryans is spread in different directions. Hmm. They have some valid points to, to argue and particularly in the... Yeah. horse is one of them. Yes. They repeatedly yes. they say there was no indigenous horse and yes. some say there yes. was horse. But, but you see that is, that is not the only thing. You see that uh, is an important thing, important thing. The arguments are very complicated. Hmm. Uh, but uh, I think we should uh, live the, the race point of view, this uh, aspect of the, of the civilization and concentrate our attention to understanding the components of the civilization rather than mm -hmm. the race of the civilization of the people. Uh, anyway, it is still in a fluid state. I wanted to tell you one thing, see, which I remember now. Uh, this is an important uh, aspect to see uh, of my uh, days in, my, in Mysore and also uh, my, I recall uh, Dr. Shikant uh, uh, this incident. Time we had visited myself, and uh, I was the secretary of the uh, History Association at that time, and uh, I had to escort him from Metropole Hotel to, to the Maharaja's College, and um, I was a young boy, and um, unnecessarily I had dressed as if you see I am an uh, English man with my three-piece suit and kind of an absurd kind of thing, see. I went and met him, a very tall, handsome man. He, is, he, has also, he had also his wife. And was he formally dressed, sir? He, no. was, he was in a white suit, a white suit. You see, and, uh, formally dressed in a sense, you see, that they used to have light suits, you see, mm -hmm. those days. And um, his wife was always very key to take care, because he was also an elderly person, and uh, people who would crowd him uh, would be put off by her. So I went there and I uh, I taken a car with me and um, uh, when I first met him and then said I introduced myself, he said, oh, uh, so um, he said to see that uh, who are your teachers? Uh, I could not help but uh, tell first to see she can trust his name. You know what he said? I know, I have read him. And then I came back and checked to see his um, uh, his study, uh, multi-volume study. There is a reference of Sri Kant Shastri in, the, in, in that volume. So he was not um, say, saying anything, um, anything uh, to please me. <laughs> so we uh, we came back to. Sir, uh, do you remember the topic of the lecture he gave at he, the time? Uh, See, in general, on, on his own, um, uh, on, the, on his own theory of history, huh. uh, theory of civilization, civilization. Huh. Uh, he had by that time published his study of history, and then. So the, it was on that one. In the central, college, in the central, uh, I mean, um, stage in the center of the Maharaja's College, there is an open stage. Uh, the function was arranged there, and I remember Dr. Shikant Shastri presided over that. Oh. And 
I coordinated with the, with the function. Was there any question and answer session after? Oh, first of all, you see that um, 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 Dr. Sridhar Shastri did not speak much. He just as he introduced and I introduced and I, he, he said a few words and then sat down. The idea is to give the platform to join me. And uh, so he spoke for about uh, 40, 55 minutes, 50, 55 minutes, uh, explaining his theory of history. And, and there was an attempt to, 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 to ask some questions. And um, I think three, four questions were asked. We had to stop the questions because there is always um, a restriction uh, because of the age uh, of uh, try and be. We could not take too much of liberty. Perhaps he was past 80 at the moment. Past 80. Past 80. Certainly past 80. I don't recall how old was he, but he was certainly very old. And uh, he was older than you. I remember Shrikan Shastri mentioning after the lecture, I think in a private conversation, he had some discussion yeah. and uh, he expressed his disagreement with, with the theory of civilizations yeah. at Toy and B. Well, that, 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 he would not go back <laughs> only to, to please some other scholar who will, because simply he has a, a worldwide reputation of that kind. But Toy and B had a great admiration for Indian culture and yes. Indian philosophy and Indian. He was a true Western Orientalist. He had uh, his own idea of Indian civilization. He was uh, <coughs> he was a he was a different kind of a, he was an interpretative historian. He did not research to see it. He he researched in Greek history and such other histories, but actually he was an interpretative historian. He Toynbee, Spengler earlier than that, Toynbee. And, uh, oh, was he different from Will Durant? Will Durant <laughs> and Sorokini, all these things, you see, they have different approaches to, uh, of interpreting the civilization. The more major difference was between uh, Spengler, Oswald Spengler, a German historian, and uh, Toynbee. Uh, In fact, Dr. Srikant Shastri has written one article which is published here. Hmm. Uh, and uh, he questions Oswald Spengler's interpretation of Western civilization yeah. about its rise and fall and we saw this uh, the fascist uh, regime which was there. That is true because he wrote in the, during the first world war period mm -hmm. uh, Oswald Spengler's essay Decline of the West is Decline of the West. I remember that. Uh, see he wrote in the, uh, uh, in the, in the uh, on the eve of the first world war and kind of thing. But um, the, the decline of the West was a, a very uh, symbolic uh, um, uh, indication of the of the fall of the Western civilization. That is true. But he sees his approach of uh, civilization and culture is quite different. You see, he made a distinction between the culture and civilization. Whereas um, Toyn B took civilization you see, as the basic unit of history, and uh, <coughs> to Oswald Spengler. Uh, when a culture declines, it becomes civilization. And uh, so it is almost the end stage of the kind of thing. Huh. Also and uh, Dr. Srikant Shastri cared a lot for objectivity and truth in history. And uh, do you think uh, that's uh, that a serious concern now? Uh, it is an unachievable goal. <laughs> unachievable goal. And even Srikant Shastri, Swatinian history doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't reflect this, uh, this value. Huh. Because you see, sometimes when he is uh, he is talking about the Chola Chalukya conflict, huh. he is more um, inclined to to bias. Uh, okay, I would say you would say bias. I said to, inclined to, to to please his own readers. You see, by saying you see that the Tamil was huh. successful. I remember an incident to see that um, uh, which is very green in my mind. We wanted to take him out of Mysore. And uh, he used to teach us, say, the Hoysala art and uh, Hoysala temples, on Hoysala temples, Hoysala culture, that kind of thing. So I was a student leader at that time, and uh, uh, he could not, he could not be easily persuaded. <laughs> but <laughs> I had the access because I used to meet him quite often and talk to him. And one day I suggested, sir, why don't we go out and uh, uh, see uh, so see Harabi, Velur, and other kinds of things. It was a big surprise to him that I asked the question. It was a big <laughs> surprise to him. And um, your mother was also not very confident that uh, he should undertake that kind of a journey. 
And those days is your difficult days. The transport was very poor. And there are not regular buses to see. And good motors also. So we got hold of a Muslim gentleman who was running a, 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 a kind of a van. van and uh, I think about 10 or 12 of us, uh, see, we, we somehow we managed to see managed to sneak into the van. And I remember that uh, as soon as I uh, stopped the, the brought the car uh, and stopped it in front of your house, um, I think there was a, a feeling that whether you would reach, it would ever reach uh, a <laughs> And I think there were about uh, six or seven girls and uh, six or seven boys. I think it was a team of 12. We were about to reach Hassan, which broke down. <laughs> And the man, you see, he was quite irresponsible. He said, you see, oh my God, you see, what can you do? You can, I can't do anything, sir. That's what he, the idea. So I ran to Hassan and then brought a, oh, another way. Another and by the time we reached, uh, see the uh, Hassan, um, uh, late at night, it was 10.30. Mm -hmm. And we were hungry. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was only one hotel in the square. I forget that name. It's a very famous hotel. We woke him up and then asked I think it is Harsha Hotel. Well, it must be, must be there. <laughs> yes. So he gave some chap chapatis. He made and gave some chapatis. You see, we then, uh, that was our only meal that day. So we found uh, lodging in the guest house, uh, Hassan guest house. We, uh, we rested there. Next morning, um, I think I had to hire another uh, bacon and went to Rebi, Belur. I think I, I remember that uh, he was explaining um, uh, in Arabic and I had a photograph of that for a long time holding the book something like that one and um, he was so uh, thoroughly um, aware of the detailed uh, reporting made in the Mysore archaeological report, reports and uh, he would read that he had also brought some of the reports and he would read and explain to, to us um, many things which would uh, otherwise would not have understood. Um, the memory of each lasted you see, uh, for a long for a long period in my life. I had later occasions to, to go to, to the same temples, uh, live there for a couple of days, and uh, read through the uh, read the, the friezes and the uh, the narratives with the help of the reports, understand them. And whenever uh, I, I spent about eight to ten days in Halabit and a couple of days is in in Belo, and all those days is I used to, to remember. Invariably used to, to our visit to, to Halabit, first visit to Halabit came used to come to my memory. And um, uh, I am happy. Uh, accidentally, unaware, I continued his tradition of study of uh, 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 temples and architecture and. Uh, is the little masterpiece, see, which became a guide to me also. And there was a couple of such uh, I it, They inspired me to, to, to make this as a PhD dissertation um, and write uh, uh, on the Weisler's extensively later on, uh, which was published in two volumes. Uh, I think I owe it to, to, to Dr. Shikantri Rastri, my teacher. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable views. And I would like to say one thing. A lot of friends of mine, they have asked this question. Your father was almost disabled, but how could he write about so many historical topics away from Mysore? Like, uh, uh, there is a pillar in Uttarakashi, Guha pillar, and he has written a research article on that. And he did not visit archaeological sites, but he could talk about it masterly. I think all his knowledge came from all these various reports and books and no, he, was, he was he was uh, he was uh, he was teaching he, he was keeping in touch with the latest reports the latest. and um, uh, he was one of those see who was not very fond of going to the uh, sites and he could not go for he various not. reasons also think of the situation those days hmm. it was impossible to, to go to to uh, go to to any site hmm. on your own there is no transportation there is no money, first of all. The teachers are very poorly paid. I am happy, I think, um, you are doing this wonderful job of uh, of, um, of reaching um, 
people who have heard of, of, of Sri Kanth Shastri, including me, but we do not know everything that he did in his lifetime. No, in fact, sir, uh, for me and for my children, we can only reach my father through his students right. because uh, we were too young when he retired from the university mm -hmm. and we never saw him in a healthy state mm -hmm. and he passed away in 1974 when I was in final MBA. Mm -hmm. so it, is a valuable time. it is a both a privilege and also a pleasure for me to recall my days uh, with him in Maharaja's college.